Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020, talking about Tropical Storm Cristobal down in the Campeche area of Mexico, making landfall earlier today, 60 mile per hour, I believe it was, Tropical Storm. Pressure was down in the low 990s, according to recon and surface data. And it was well on its way to organizing a core, it looked like, and another 24 hours, it likely would have been a hurricane, indicating the vigorous nature and the overall health of its circulation. So that'll be the basis for where we begin today. We'll look at the National Hurricane Center tracking map and their homepage. Here's the 11 o'clock advisory information, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central. Pressure was 995, so yeah, it was in the mid-990s and 60 mile per hour winds now it's on land there in the Campeche area or Campeche however you want to say it moving south southeast at three knots now this is when the clock starts ticking for US interests and we'll address that as we go forward that's the track map over the next several days heading towards central Louisiana it looks like apparently and it's really going to all come down to how long this part of the saga drags out. If it stays over land longer, if it moves deeper down here towards Guatemala, or if it drifts west any towards the more rugged terrain of southeastern Mexico, it's going to be a completely different story. It could almost dissipate. That is a scenario that could happen. Um, and the overall pattern down here is, is favorable. Lots of energy associated with the Central American gyre that we've talked about a lot. But the general idea is that it moves southeast, turns north as the flow changes around a high sitting out this way, and another high that's going to be building in over the west to the west of the system. And Cristobal goes in between the two up into the Central Gulf Coast area, most likely into Louisiana. How strong will it be? What will the structure of it be? All of those things are going to matter. And none of those things are relevant at this moment because we're still a few days away. So we want to make sure that we stay on uh, target here as to what to expect later. We'll deal with it later. You know what I mean? There's no reason to speculate right now because we don't even have it in the Gulf of Mexico yet. We know that there will likely be impacts, heavy rain, coastal flooding, onshore flow. You get storm surge. That area of the country is very vulnerable people that live there, they already know these things. They are used to it. I'm here to just make you aware and keep you reminded of such things. The extent of those impacts, impossible to know this far out. What we do know is down here in southeast Mexico, the Campeche area, parts of the Yucatan, uh, lots of heavy rain. 25, 30 inches of rain, and this is a slow-moving system. It is still has a foot in the water, so to speak. Uh, you know, the, the land of the terrain where it's located now is generally flat. Um, it's not over the rugged terrain of southeastern Mexico. So the rain threat in this region is going to be prolific. And there's already been problems. We've seen that coming out of El Salvador and other areas in Central America. And that will continue to be the case. Here's a visible satellite animation courtesy of the weathernerds.org site. And you can see it's very well organized. It had a good deal of lightning right around the core there as it made landfall in this general vicinity. And I'm telling you, it was on its way to developing a tight inner core and becoming a hurricane. And so that shows me that it's got a lot of life to it, a lot of spunk. It's, it's well situated in its environment. It's not struggling. The overall background state is favorable, and it likes that, so to speak. And so kind of like a ball rolling down the hill, it's not a matter of whether or not the hill is still there. You know, the ball is going to keep rolling as long as there's gravity involved. And, and it's until you change the slope of the hill that you slow the ball from rolling, all things being equal. And I think that's the situation with this. Now, um, over time, if it drags out, like I've said, if it moves southeast all the way over into Guatemala and then comes up this way, that's a lot more time over land. And so what we've got to look for does convection fire up over the ocean here, over the Bay of Campeche, where water temperatures are warm and warmer than average, kind of tugging that center back out over the water. The earlier this comes out over water, and this is anybody can figure this out, the sooner this comes back out over the water, the quicker it's going to start to intensify. 
and become more of a problem for the Gulf Coast. But look, there's feeder bands coming all the way in over here towards Cozumel and uh, the northeast tip of the Yucatan. There's a feeder band there. There's heavy rain in these bands. You know, it's raining and showers and thunderstorms all the way over southeast Mexico. This is already a big deal. It's a big impact event for these people from just rainfall alone. The category and the wind get the headlines. It's those other impacts that really do the damage, uh, especially in these formative, quote, weak systems. Nothing weak or insignificant about two feet of rainfall. Ask people in Houston, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, you name it, you know it, flooding is a big concern. Again, I wish that I could get the tropical storm symbol off of this graphic. Otherwise, I love it from the University of Wisconsin. We really need to keep a, a, a look at how the vorticity is doing. Um, I'll find a different source. Somebody mentioned once on YouTube comments that Tropical Tidbits has a way to look at current vorticity. Uh, I, I probably need to look for a source that doesn't put the symbol over it because I want to keep track of the shape of it. How does the vorticity look? That's going to be very important as we go forward. Does it remain in a circular fashion, concentrated? Does it start to become elongated and spread out? The energy, how does it bundle that energy? That's going to be very important as we go forward. And so I'll be looking to see how we can find a, a more helpful graphic than this one. This one's nice, but with the symbol over it, it's like, ugh. Anyhow, uh, this is interesting. The track definitely will take it over this pocket of higher ocean heat content, which is getting in towards the middle of the spectrum over here. Uh, simply indicating higher amounts of available heat content. More energy in the ocean here, the Gulf of Mexico specifically, uh, for this to tap into uh, after it does this kind of deal here and heads up towards the Gulf Coast. Yes, there's going to be some pretty good ocean heat content for it to work with. Uh, and what is upper ocean heat content? Just real quick, again, the surface of the ocean, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, that's helpful for hurricanes to develop. That's where they draw that latent heat out of. The deeper into the water that that 80 degree line extends, what we call the 80 degree isotherm, the deeper that is into the ocean, the more upper ocean heat content there is. And in this case, uh, when you start to see just little hints of yellow in there, again, that's getting towards the middle of the scale, that's some pretty impressive energy for this to tap into uh, over the Gulf, and so that would aid in strengthening going forward. But I'm telling you, it's all going to come down to how long it stays over land in terms of what it has to work with when it comes off of land and into the Gulf. Looking at the GFS, 12Z run from today, here is Cristobal down here, and you can see that vorticity signature, GFS picks up on it. See how it's real dark right towards the center? very compact, bundling that energy, that is the sign of uh, you know, an intensifying system, and it certainly was. So, this is six hours from this morning, so this is valid almost right now as I'm producing this video. Let's move it on out to 24 hours. Here's Thursday morning. Now you see the vorticity is a little bit more spread out. It's losing its energy a little bit. You do have these feeder bands coming in that the GFS is sensing. Then another little area of vorticity over the northern Yucatan. Don't know if that's spurious, if it's real, if it's not. It kind of doesn't matter to me. This is what the model is indicating. I'm going to look at the real-time stuff tomorrow and you know see what it really looks like. Satellite imagery, the vorticity image that I talked about, you know, and so forth. Nevertheless, moving on out to 48 hours, it starts to unravel here. And this is a big clue. Everything is spreading out. It's a larger area. And... It's going to come down to whether or not that actually happens. If that doesn't happen, and it's more over the water and more focused, then it's a different story for the northern Gulf Coast. So it's really hard to say. We'll go out to 72 hours. Now, you know, yeah, it's got that S shape to it overall. You know, But look, folks, the difference between what it looks like here at day three, kind of strung out, larger, sprawling, and where it is to begin with, which is this morning right there, and we go back in time even, we go from that to that, it's like, well, I'm not real sure what it's going to do. Finally, by 96 hours, 
large spread out system not very concentrated in here you don't see any 50 knot wind barbs except way over here on the eastern side at 5,000 feet this is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere the 850 millibar chart that we're looking at and then finally as we go to day five presumably making landfall there over Louisiana and it's just this large rainmaker with onshore flow shallow coastal flooding not nothing you know this is not well marked that's a non-event well that I call BS it is an event a lot of rain severe weather thunderstorms choppy waters disruptions to people trying to return to this whatever not normal COVID life we're living you know this is this is what I'm talking about it, it may not be a hurricane it may look subtropical I don't know it's still gonna cause problems and people have to focus on that commerce using I-10 across Louisiana there uh, I-20 whatever truckers travelers whatever the case may be you're gonna have impacts that's what we have to focus on we can hone in on the more severe impacts storm surge wind is it gonna be a hurricane is it not we just don't know these things right now it's a complex setup well, fairly complex it's really gonna come down to how long does it stay over water what does it have structurally wise when it moves back how long does it stay out over water how long does it stay over land before it moves it you can tell my mind I gotta slow down that's the key land interaction and then what does it have to work with once it moves back out over water we don't know the answers to those questions right now it's a wait and see situation hey look 3 p.m. Eastern not long from now I'm gonna go live right here on my YouTube channel with weathermodels.com guru and he is a guru in my opinion Jack Sillen we're gonna discuss the models and what we're seeing what to look for live right here on my YouTube channel all of this supported by our patrons via patreon if you want to join up as little as a dollar a month or you can go from there all the benefits hey it helps everybody in the end I appreciate your support that's how I'm able to do this through our patreon community and as such I'll be able to be on here live at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern if you're following on YouTube you know make that notification bell active so that when I go live you're notified and Jack Sillen and I will talk about this in more detail we'll also take a look at that time at the Euro as it comes out live right here on hurricane track on YouTube all right that's all I got for now I'll see you back here in a little less than an hour and a half 3 p.m. Eastern with Jack Sillen I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, my website. I'll see you at 3 o'clock Eastern.